Hello, we're live. Hi. Hey, Frank. How are you doing? I'm fine, are you? Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining. It's much appreciated. We yeah, good thanks, for, thanks for the invitation, right? Definitely. Well, it's been too long since we spoke, you know, it's been uh, yeah. since October. Yeah. And I think you're probably the first person who I've spoken to extensively before doing one of these live chats. So I thought, why yeah. not bring, bring it on to the, um, to, to, the, to the the YouTube and get it going that way. But yeah. before we start a talk, do you want to tell us who you are, what you do and that kind of yeah. thing? Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Frank Geisler and I run an um, IT consulting company and a Microsoft um, partner here in uh, lovely Lüdinghausen, which everyone knows, right? Well, of course, I know. Yeah. Well, yeah, Lüdinghausen <laughs> is, a, is a small town or a small city in um, south of Münsterland. So it's uh, um, a little bit between uh, Ruhrgebiet, which is one of the main um, industrial areas in Germany, and uh, Münster, which is also very nice. Yes. And yeah, well, I, I run my own company. I'm a Microsoft Data Platform MVP for the ninth year now. And nice. I'm also one of the founders of the um, uh, Pass Deutschland e.V., which is mm. a German chapter of uh, formerly Pass Global before they were, were going mm. bankrupt. But um, we, we were all the, every, every time or all the time we were independent. So mm. this, this didn't affect us uh, in, by any means. And um, for, I think, six or seven years, I'm on the board of directors from PASS uh, Germany uh, uh, um, or PASS Deutschland e.V. <laughs> I, I have run the um, regional chapter Ruhrgebiet for many, many years. Mm. And mm. Um, uh, during the pandemic, um, I thought it would be a very good idea to um, to found another in-person um, user group here in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, well, no, Good timing. The, 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 story, the story was that um, my company was moving from Essen, which is in mm. Ruhrgebiet, to uh, Lüdinghausen, where I live, because I didn't have any, uh, any interest in uh, going, and going there uh, all, um, every day. And it was like a um, traffic jam all over the place mm. and, and, and things like this. And um, I found a very nice office here, so I moved my company to Lüdinghausen, and then I said, well, when I'm in Lüdinghausen, I just have to um, have another um, regional group, which is uh, like the group Münsterland. You were getting bored, uh, you just you needed more to do, right? Yeah, well, but, 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 I, but I left the regional group um, um, Ruhrgebiet. Um, hmm. this, uh, we, we were three persons running this, it was yeah. uh, Gabi Münster. Um, okay. Who is now at Microsoft and uh, Klaus Hölzgen? Huh. Greetings here at this uh, at this uh, thing, and um, they they did the perfect job, and they uh, run the um, regional group um, group mm. beat. Um, nice. Yeah, and on on the other hand, I'm um, I'm um, a speaker. I'm speaker on um, many national and international conferences. Um, last conference I have spoken on was um, in person uh, was mm. the past summit in Seattle in November. Cool. Very nice. And I've I've spoken I think two weeks ago on the um, Austrian Data Community Day or something like this. Um, and I also write books. Why not? Yeah, why, why not? not? Exactly. 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 So basically what you're trying to say is that you keep yourself busy. So you're, you're, yeah. you're, not, you're yeah. not a bored person. I'm just going to yeah. bring up one topic here because someone asked um, what, what is the topic. Um, so if you've never joined these chats before, generally there is no topic. We just talk about like data and Power BI yeah. types. It's like a very informal getting to know people in the data Power BI community. So if you join for a topic... You're going to be disappointed, I'm afraid. The, the topic is, is people and the things that yeah. we do with data. Why not? That, that can be the topic. Um, okay. But yeah, but you missed something out very important, Frank, about what you do and who you are. You're also my mentor. Yeah. Remember? And, uh, and mentor. congratulations, Ben, you survived. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, I, um, I first, we first spoke when I was going to do the, uh, the new stars of data, right? And yeah. um, when you do new stars of data, you get allocated a mentor to kind of talk you through yeah. the process and help you, you know, less be less terrified of doing that sort of thing for the first time. And you were, of course, um, you, of course, my mentor, which was very good yeah. fun. And I enjoyed talking to you about the to about the my chosen topic, which I think was drill throughs, as far as I yeah, remember. Exactly. It was, yeah, it was exactly. drill throughs. Exactly. And uh, I, w I remember being terrified the day before, not because of the presentation, but I'd been told that 
the very topic I was going to be talking about, this whole thing with, with drill throughs, was going to be changed quite significantly really mm -hmm. soon. And I was like, if they change that the day before my presentation, I'm ah, totally great. screwed. Yeah. But it that's hasn't been changed still. So, so I don't know. Well, that's, 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 yeah, but that, that's, that's good then, right? Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. so there was one thing which uh, was um, I, I've written the, um, with, with uh, three colleagues of mine, with um, Oliver Engels, with Stefan Altenberg, and with Wolfgang Strasser. I've written the mm -hmm. Power BI for Dummies book, uh, yeah. the, German, the German book, right? Mm -hmm. And when we are when we were in the in the process of writing, mm -hmm. they changed the user interface from uh, it was uh, as you remember Power BI was sometimes dark, right, yeah, with the, with, yeah. with dark theme, and they changed it to um, a light theme with um, w which lo looks more like office. Yeah, I yeah, remember that during our the writing of our book, so we could do all the um, screenshots over again. <sighs> Man, that's a nightmare. I mean, yeah, who, it was who, who it got was. that? Who got that task of going through and just taking every single screenshot again? Every, every. Um, so everyone was writing um, his own chapters. So everyone ah, okay. had to do it for his, for his own chapters, right? That's yeah, horrible. But really, yeah, but yeah. Uh, but this is a world in which we live in now with the evergreening and everything mm. like this. So uh, if you're a Power BI consultant or, mm. or a Power BI trainer, there could yeah. be some surprises when you're in front of the class and the yeah. uh, interface just changed. It's and the nature say, well, of the job for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you said, well, I'm really 100 percent sure that mm. this option was there yesterday, mm. but it yeah. isn't. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so true. And I, I've mentioned this before on one of these streams that I, I was literally doing that. It was it was the, the update that you're talking about. It was a major update mm -hmm. before that. And um, I was literally in the second day of training in Ludwigshafen, by the way. Yeah, okay. I was in Ludwigshafen, um, my, my former company, BASF. Um, and Open Power BI, it all has changed. And I had to blag my way through and it's basically oh. pretend I knew what I was doing. Yeah. And I mean, I was like, oh yeah, if I click here and I, I managed somehow, okay, but I actually spoke to someone and they said they always had two versions on the device. One, not from the store. So basically one that wouldn't automatically update mm -hmm. and that would always use as the training one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's one. Of, I'm just going to go back to a couple of comments that I want to pick up on, by the way, yeah, because sure. Jeff said that it was, it's the show about nothing which I love because that's the Seinfeld, right? So if the, if I could be the Seinfeld of live streams, that's yeah. fine. I, I'll take that. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. And um, I'm the Deneb guy. Uh, I, I am. I do a lot of Deneb. So you might have seen me some of some my, my Deneb stuff on uh, on YouTube. So I'll also, if the, the Deneb guy, I'm fine. I'm fine with any label, to be honest. I, I, I got the, the Joe Rogan of, 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 podcast, or of YouTube or of Power BI or something. I was also okay with that. I was like, just give me any label. I'll take it. It's fine. Uh, just makes me feel important. <laughs> um, sorry for the interruption there, by the way. Oh, no problem, no problem. Um, but yes, there's the, the stuff changing. I mean, when the change came with the, that you're talking about that you had to do for yeah. your book, I'd created a report where you would kind of go through and, and click it with the report itself was like a, just a giant screenshot of Power BI explaining all the different elements using like multiple bookmarks. Mm -hmm. And... Um, of course, it, I was about to publish this report and it just changed straight away, so I had to, I had to redo it. So yeah. it's, it's, it's just what happens. If I'm the yeah. Deneb guy, then who is Daniel Patrick Marsh? Then he's the, 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 the Deneb god. That's reasonable, right? He's the guy who creates it, so that's fine. Anyway, back to you, Frank. I'm just kind of focusing too much on the comments ah, at the no, moment. No problem, no, just... Um, but yeah, so how do you get into mentoring, by the way? Is it something that you just decided to do or someone approached you or how does that work? Ben Weissman forced me to do this. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Because, yeah. yeah, because he had some intimidating pictures of me. No, 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 no. This is not not the problem. No, no. But just Ben Weissman asked me to do this, and um, of course, what I think what is um, always a good thing is um to get new faces into the data community, mm. to get new speakers, to mm. um support speakers, and um. Yeah, well, and, and this is, uh, um, and Ben Weissman asked me if I if I would be interested in it, and I said, yeah, sure. Nice. And I think you was, uh, I think, third, third mentee I had. Just a third? Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. Did a great job for the third. Thank you. Was, Thank was, you very much. I, I, I enjoyed much. the process immensely. 
Um, but yeah, so this was this is this is where we where we met. This is where yeah. we met basically, and yeah. uh, we didn't speak for a couple of months since then because I think after that happened, November hit, and it was like where my entire family got sick for. Oh yeah. Like you know when like in Germany, I'm not sure what the rest, but in Germany, like everyone was sick like really yeah. badly. For, like that was a nightmare. So, everyone uh, except me. For some. Oh, you were fine, were you? I was you... fine. I was fine, but. Uh, also, my daughter was um, um, ill, like for ten weeks or something. Yeah, well, really, and and every and um, everyone you were talking about was some kind of ill or some. Mm. Yeah, well. yeah. I was going to be asking what what you've been doing in the meantime, and I was looking on. I did my usual kind of stalking as I do, kind of googling people and going on their websites and on your MVP page, and one thing stuck out. Um, so. Simply because I had a really funny name, which in German is Bimmel Ben hat um, which in English which means Bumbling Ben has man flu, and yeah. that's the that's the name of one of your talks. And I'm <laughs> yeah, no, well, this is um, um, I I was doing the um, uh, Please Talk Data to Me podcast with mm. um, Ben Weismann, who is mm. also known as Bimmel Ben and uh, okay. Simon Heidelberg. And yeah, well, and 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 one uh, one show he was a little bit ill or a little bit sick, and so uh, okay. this was like yeah. Well, if if you go on please talk data to me dot pe, then yeah. you see all our podcasts, all our episodes, and they have all some funny names. I tried to go to it, but Bitdefender says it's suspicious and wouldn't let me do it. Ah well, yeah, that's because it's... we just uh, put uh, some malware on your PC, and then yeah, that's will, fair enough. Uh, so, and and then we will just uh, um, uh, force a ransom from you. Yeah, so we, I we, assume we, that you were tracking oh. me anyway. To be honest, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, well, no, uh, I think there are some technical issues at the moment. But yeah. what you can do is you can get all the episodes, for example, on um, on uh, podcasts on Apple or on Spotify or mm. wherever you you. I think we we are on like. Um, uh, what was it called? I think on these or something as well. But if okay. you go to Spotify or if you go to Apple Podcasts, you will find us there. I'll also, I'll try to, to to post a link. I'm I'm not good at multitasking at all, as Jeff well knows. Um, yeah. uh, so I'm not good at. I'll try to to post a link uh, uh, later or during the, sh the show at some point. But yeah. I'll I'll, I'll yeah. put it out there. People can see. Um, but other than that, other than other than things with funny names, what, what have you been up to? You just before you sorry, you're going to give me a specific answer. I'm sure I had one further question because I think the last time we spoke, you mentioned something that was it like the data relay or something where you were in the UK. Yes, yes, that that that, that was very awesome. I can talk yeah. about this. A it sounds little awesome. Little bit. Um, and um, I think I was on on the Friday when the um, new stars of data was. And yes. I was uh, I was in I think um, uh, Bristol or something. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think we sounds were about right. You mentioned yeah, Bristol. Yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So this was a very awesome experience, and I think I will do it this year again. So cool. the data relay um, is a conference. Is a conference on the road. So. Mm. Um, they have like a tour bus, uh, like uh, something like Metallica, but bigger. That's so and, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, we, we were on this tour bus and then we were going um, through different cities in, in, um, in the UK. So we were in um, Birmingham. We've mm. been in Leeds. Okay. We've been in Reading and we've mm. been in, in Bristol. Not bad. And it was really amazing because um, to be honest, the only city in the UK I know is London a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's about what, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was really awesome to, to see all the cities, and I really mm. enjoyed it. And they were, uh, and the cities. Ah, well, that's uh, the the story with London is not true because I um, also graduated. Um, I have my um, uh, master of science at the mm. university in Liverpool, but this was an online degree. But okay. I went to Liverpool for the ceremony. Okay, right? nice. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, well, um, and I've been in Cambridge as well sometimes. Maybe I. Yeah, you've you've been around. You need to go further yeah. north, a bit like north, north, like like Newcastle. You got to get Newcastle, yeah. mate. Yeah, this is this is something where I haven't been really. I haven't been into Scotland as well. So oh, I Scotland's to, beautiful. I, I, I have to do this. I have yeah, to for do sure. This. Yeah, um, I would I would say forget Newcastle, go to Scotland instead. It's far nicer. I maybe maybe sometime. I, I yeah, think I'm, this, is, this is this is on the bucket list as well. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, but but it was really really nice experience. So um, we were touring on these four cities, 
Mm. And um, uh, I had um, all the time the same talk. It was about um, Azure Data Explorer and introductory talk to Azure Data Explorer. And it was really nice because um, um, moving um, through all the cities, um, I was a nicer German on the, on the bus, okay. the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it was what really nice hanging out with the guys and um, having some fun doing um, doing uh, the talks. And, and what was really, really amazing in Birmingham, um, there, um, the venue was a cinema. There was a That's really right. big um, a multiplex cinema in Birmingham with the most comfortable seats I've ever sat on in the cinema. Really, uh, and they had they had a little they had a little um, a little table you can just um, uh, pull out mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for nachos and stuff like this. And what was really amazing was that um, my my talk was on this really big screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you're so little on, and there's so big screen. It was and and fun thing I, I didn't knew that because I. Uh, I don't always read uh, the appointments and everything, so I mm. didn't knew that this was in the cinema. But um, the um, the talk was about Data Explorer, and it was something like, uh, "Is uh, is um, Azure Data Explorer the holy grail for data retrieval, or something like this?" Mm. And so, I, and so um, on my presentation, I did an Indiana Jones theme, and this <laughs> was a perfect match. Yeah, right. Exactly. Good point. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like oh. a lot of good. Where did that come? I mean, not, is this this has happened every year? Is it a regular thing? I've yeah, never heard of it before until. It, it was. It was. Um, I think um, beforehand it was um, SQL Relay, and oh, okay. um, and they changed the name. They changed the organizing team. Um, mm. And um, yeah, but they will like to do this um, uh, every year. Uh, and, and, and and before the before the pandemic, they did it also. I think every year, and um, they will do it this year again. Mm. And um, there will no, not only be four cities, but five. Wow! And and five other cities. Um, yeah, I did some data wrangling with Indiana Jones. Whip, yes, exactly. Yeah, that sounds yeah. cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's really That's astonishing. Awesome. It's really astonishing what you can order at Amazon. But well. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm so, scared of your order history now, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I won't show my order history here yeah. on this. On this uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, but it was it was really really good. Yeah, nice. No, no, it just it sounded different because the idea of like a two of us, and yeah. also the fact that you're sitting there with that electric guitar behind you as well, kind of like the idea of you know exactly yeah well, having a, a band on the bus perhaps as well. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, but. This is probably a stupid question. You did? Did you? You didn't sleep on the bus, though, right? You had a hotel no, room. No, no, no. There were there were hotels. Okay. It was, I had this idea of like this, like like a proper two of us from a band with like beds and stuff. You no, know? No, 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 no. It was it was uh, just a regular bus. Fair enough. So yeah, cool. But, Very yeah. nice. No, yeah, I really enjoyed I, it. I really enjoyed it, and then uh, what I also enjoyed to see um, these four different um, cities in the UK. And mm. I, I was always um, going for a walk to the city center and mm. uh, looking around a little bit. And it was really, really good. Cool. Very nice. Yeah. Um, other than that, so that was that was, that was was me prompting you to talk, talk about um, the, yeah. the, the data reader because I had in mind. Other than that, you, you, you're a very busy person. So um, yeah, well, you're, yeah, in the, you're in the US, right? Exactly. So finally, back in the US, I really, I really, really uh, like to be in the U.S. because mm. um, the area um, around Seattle is so nice, and I'm, I, I really, uh, and before the pandemic, I've been twice or three times a year in the U.S. Mm. And um, this was my first visit to the U.S. after the pandemic, and mm. it was really, really great. I was speaking at um, Pass Summit. Mm. I had, um, I had. Um, three sessions, uh, two planned and one unplanned session. So the uh, planned session was, I was talking about um, BICEP um, and BICEP for the data professional, how to build, About what, sorry? Um, BICEP. 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 Like a muscle. Is, yeah. If you see me, if, what other topic should I talk about? But <laughs> BICEP, right? No, well, BICEP, BICEP is, uh, do you know ARM templates for Azure? No, I do not. Please okay. inform me. Oh, yeah, OK. So what you can do, if you would like to build some Azure resources, um, mm -hmm. on the one hand, you can use um, the portal, but uh, this is too much manual work. On the other hand, what you could do is you can use PowerShell. And I'm okay. really, really, really into PowerShell. I love PowerShell. Okay. Um, and uh, 
you can you can just build your resources by um, doing things like new Azure Virtual Machine, new whatever, new Azure SQL Database, whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, and this is a thing which is also very common to um, Kubernetes, is um, you just describe your environment. So what you do is you have a script, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in the script you can describe your environment. Like I have a um, I have um, an Azure Virtual Machine, I have a Azure SQL Database. I have whatnot and put it all in this in this um, description. And everyone who's in the data space knows um, mm. uh, things like this because SQL works the same way. You mm. don't tell the computer how to get your data, but only what data you would like to retrieve, right? Yeah. And this is you tell the computer what for uh, what resources you would like to have. And mm. the, and and the, and the interesting thing on this is that um, if you can you can deploy um, an uh, arm template and i will come to a bicep a little bit uh, uh, a little bit further but if you deploy an arm template to an azure subscription um, um the azure resource manager will have a look at your arm template it will have a look at your um at your current environment and it will just create everything which is not in your environment and it will mm -hmm. just do things for example you have a virtual machine in your environment running with a certain uh, with a certain size right and what you can do then is you can just um, go and uh, in your in your script you can just put in um, some other um, size mm -hmm. and it will recognize oh well the size has changed and then it won't delete your machine because there could be data on or some stuff right mm -hmm. but what it will do it it will just um, it will just um, 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 shut down your machine uh, um, apply the new size and mm -hmm. um, turn it on again. And so you can, it's it's like um, um, okay. an orchestration tool or something like this. Okay. And um, 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 ARM templates are JSON code. Huh? Oh, well, okay. And everyone loves to read JSON code, right? So um, so what Microsoft did, um, for, uh, did, did um, then, they were constructing BICEP, and BICEP is some kind of um, um, simplified JSON notation. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, do you know YAML? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 like uh, YAML. Uh, it's it's just uh, more human readable, more understandable, and more not so much brackets uh, uh, mm. notation of JSON. The thing is, I think I'm a, some kind of freak because I actually do enjoy reading the JSON format. Oh, wow. I, I I I think I, I kind of got used to it from I don't know probably I'm not hitting APIs or something. I'm not entirely yeah, sure, okay. but okay. I just kind of trained my eyes to go through. But I, I understand it can it, it could be a lot more you know friendly okay. or easier on okay. the eye. Okay. I know I'm I know I'm the, I'm the exception to that rule there. Yeah. Um, but cool. So you talk was on 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 bicep format um, on yeah. bicep uh, on things, bicep right? and how how to build um, mm. data environments with bicep. Yeah. This was this was one talk. The other talk I had with my very best friend uh, Ben Kettner. Okay. Uh, greetings, Ben. <laughs> if you see this and um what we did there was we um introduced some um test testing um for azure data factory so um mm -hmm. how if you build an azure data factory how you could build a testing environment to um check whether the um the, all the data you would like to see is uh, was transferred and, and things like this yeah. and we, we we did a, some kind of combination with azure data factory uh with a testing framework of azure devops and with um i don't know if you know the t sql t framework okay. where you can where you can write um t sql uh, mm -hmm. or where you can write unit tests in t sql okay. and we we combined everything and Damn. this was very good as well and uh, and we went to the US on um, Thursday, mm -hmm. and we we've been um, when we arrived in Seattle, we got a really nice car, and then we were driving down to Portland. Yeah. Um, and I have the perfect uh, the perfect uh, tip how to overcome um, jet lag. Okay. So we were flying in the plane for nine hours, right? Yeah. Then I then I was driving to Portland uh, mm. like four hours, um, yeah. and after that we were we were arriving like at um, at uh, six or seven p.m. at our hotel, mm. and then we said, well, um, should we stay here or we were uh, invited to a whiskey a whiskey tasting of one of the uh, of one one <laughs> one of the um, um, organizers of mm. uh, Sequel Saturday Oregon. From Jessica. Hi, Jessica. 
<laughs> and <laughs> and uh, am I allowed to uh, greet my mom as well? No, no. you can well, whoever you want, mate. It's fine. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> to your dog okay, as well but, if you want. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, sadly, I don't have a dog. I would li- I would really like to have a dog, but I don't have any time. So it yeah. would be it would be not Sorry. not fair for the dog if it's here all the, all day alone. So uh, I get but, you. Um, but what we what we did is we did some uh, decent whiskey tasting. Um, okay. uh, more Ben was doing the whiskey tasting. I'm not a whiskey guy, but um, uh, yeah. Well, and, and we stayed there like uh, 2 a.m. <laughs> and, and after that, after after that, we we were uh, like dead in a hotel room, and then we <laughs> we, we woke up like uh, eight in the morning and no jet lag. Okay. And all the time, I, I I was like 12 days in the U.S. and all the time no jet lag. When he came back, uh, not so much. Okay, a little, little bit, but yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, that, n- next next time I go, I haven't been on, on a flight of, of that length for many many years. But next yeah. time I'll do, I'll, I'll take a tip because I I do enjoy a bit of whiskey, as does Donald as well. Apparently, so so there you go. Yeah, but but what what's the fun thing as well? And this is something I didn't knew uh, is, and I think Ben didn't knew as well, is that in the US they also have some flavored whiskeys. Like okay. whiskey with uh, with cinnamon, whiskey okay. with vanilla. I'm probably too much. With... I'm probably too much of a whiskey snob to drink that. To be honest, it's yeah, it's but... not like <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was really disgusting. And 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 uh, ben is not... <laughs> ben, 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 yeah, I, I just I just I just had a little bit. But um, and Ben and and Ben was, uh, Ben Ben is also a big uh, whiskey uh, fan, right? And uh, yeah, whiskey with gunpowder they didn't have, but um, <laughs> but, but Ben is also a big whiskey fan. As I said, I'm not a big whiskey fan, and um, there was there was like like whiskey with peanut butter taste or something like this. And and the very the very the very last thing was Ben was doing. He was he was mixing uh, whiskey with peanut butter taste with vanilla with. Uh, I think uh, I think there was brown sugar as well. He was mixing all together and was drinking that, and it was like, well, it tastes like Snickers. <laughs> just, just listening to you talk, I'm starting to feel like I'm going to get hungover. Just li- listening to, 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 to yeah, well, this description. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, but yeah. we didn't have any hangover as well. So oh, that's that's perfect. impressive. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I gotta say that like, whiskeys. I mean, I. I I don't drink that often. I drink normally at like Christmas and maybe like one other time of year, really. No, um, no. I like to drink whiskey at Christmas, mm? and I'll drink it with it, and I'll have a couple of mince pies oh, on okay. on Christmas Eve whilst I'm watching Die Hard. That's kind of like my yeah, routine. The perfect Christmas movie, right? Exactly. And yeah. when I say when I say mince pie, maybe you don't know what I mean. You know what a mince pie is? It's a very English thing. Yes, I think I I know. Okay, it's kind of because it's. It's my challenge in having Christmas in Germany to get mince pies. I've got to try and get the okay. stuff or get them delivered or I've got to like make them myself. Okay. And every uh, every year, once a year, there's a, a there's a shop for people who don't know in, in Berlin. It's called so, um, KDW. It's kind yeah, of like, yeah. yeah, yeah, you'll know for sure about some of the people. Um, I would say maybe it's like, I don't know, kind of like akin to like a Harrods maybe. Not not so much, but yeah. it's kind of this. this yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And every year I'll go there to get sweet mints for my for my for my mince pies yeah. and and every time i go i'll ask someone where it is and they don't know what it is or they assume that it actually has actual meat in it and stuff um anyway i'm i'm rambling on like i usually do this is when i have my 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 whiskey and um, so i'll try to get some nice every year and what donald's saying that he gets oh, is, i always pronounce this ochentoshin i could say incorrectly but it's it is good whiskey to be fair <laughs> yeah okay well so what what I did I'm I'm um, yeah I I would say uh, uh, really yeah, well not good but uh, maybe ambitioned uh, uh, hobby mm. cook or hobby mm. chef and um, what I did this uh, this Christmas um, I was doing um, uh, maple whiskey eggnog and this was okay it was really uh, it is really easy to make and it was really so good it was okay. really really so good I'm I'm intrigued. So, maple. Shall, shall I give you? Shall I give you the recipe? The recipe. It's it's really easy. You just Please have tell to me. Have, have, yeah. You just have to have a mixer, right? Yeah. yeah. And in this mixer, you put um, four eggs, just just eggs. Put put them in there, and then you put, and then you put in um, like three hundred uh, grams of uh, of cream, uh-huh. uh, two two hundred grams of milk, mm-hmm. 
Then um, to sweeten the thing, you <laughs> put in the maple syrup, right? Mm. You you put in some um, some cinnamon. You put in um, some um, um, uh, what was what was it called in English? Um, uh, uh, do you know Muscatnuss in German? It's, yeah, uh, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't pronounce it. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of yeah. groundnut or something. Else. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah, some yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, whatever. You put yeah. this in, and then you put in uh, whiskey to liking, and you just stir it all the all the time with the mm. with the um, with the mixer. Yeah, it's done in like I think three minutes, and it's really really good. Nutmeg, thank you, Nutmeg, Jeff. Nutmeg, exactly, Jeff. Oh, thanks. God, that was driving Nutmeg, me crazy. Exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I think um, speaking in a um, different language, one of the hardest things is about speaking about food. I can imagine, actually. That's that's yeah. fair because it's yeah. one of the things that you re very rarely see in the other language, you know. Yeah, yeah, and 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 there are so things which are really, really uh, mm -hmm. like like special. There was mm -hmm. one time I was I was at a um, at a German. I was not a restaurant, but it was like a, like a mensa or something like this, mm -hmm. and um, there were some uh, some foreign guests, and they had Schweinekopfsulze. There okay. you go. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> No, you know, you know what this is, or what is it? Schweine was? Schweine So, so pig, it's, it's pig head something. Pig, pig head jelly. Pig head jelly. Oh, okay. Oh my god. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Jesus good. Christ. And I saw this and I said, "Thank you." Delicious. Mm. Why, why not schnitzel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. man. Uh, well, I'm, yeah. I'm being look. Jeff's getting impatient, and he's he started to throw throw questions about about Power BI and stuff. So, let's let should we should we talk data a little bit as well? Is yeah, it okay? we, we can. Sure, we could. sure. Yeah. So, um, Jeff, to my opinion, uh, one of the um, most missing functionalities in Power BI is something like, um, yeah, well, I think something like um, an engine where you can have uh, templates or something like this. So. So um, what I mean with this, this is some, something maybe maybe there is something in Power BI right now or some I don't know. But um, for example, if you do um, professional Power BI reports, one of the first um, demands you get is, well, this has to have our CI, yeah, yeah. right? And for sure, there are some things like um, you can you can have your own theme with your own colors, with your own fonts, mm. whatever. Mm. But um, a really good, um, well, Framework like uh, having the logo in in one of the one of the edges or whatever some mm. some, some disclaimer text or whatever I think this is something that was missing and interesting about this is that this was a functionality which was also missing from reporting service as well. Okay. So, yeah. so and and I don't know how, how you see it, Ben, but one of the first demands is uh, well, this has to look like our CI. I th I mean this this is something that a lot of people use like like power um PowerPoint for right they'll create something on PowerPoint and they'll use that as the yeah. and then yeah. it's a very yeah. it's a very cl it's a clumsy process that you have to use PowerPoint yeah. to bring it into Power BI. I actually we had this discussion um we had this there was a discussion had on um Twitter months ago about this subject about you know making a report branded with the company yeah. themes. I am not a fan of it. I know, I know it's, it's often requested. Um, yeah. I bear in mind I've never done any consulting work. Yeah, so I've only okay. do, I've only done it for the companies who I work for. So BSF okay. back then. Uh, 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 now I work for Mr. Specs. Um, yeah. I just I think it's 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 a it's a vanity, and yeah. un, unless you're sharing a report external from your company, uh, or using it to to show for for marketing purposes externally, oh. it's not like you're going to forget the company that you're working for, right? Uh, I understand the color thing. I can get on board with because standardization of colors is is important, so it helps in that regard. Um, but I'm 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 generally speaking, I'm not as not a fan of yep. of branded templates. However, consulting but is a different story. I understand that. But that you don't know uh, what company you are working for, something like this. I have to disagree because the, the, all the all the reports are uh, aimed at the management, right? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but interesting that you work for Mr. Specs because I've been there like five years ago. Oh, you really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. 
I, yeah. I, start, I started work there in 2019, so we missed by a couple of years, or maybe one year. Actually, not, not one so long. Year. Yeah, I think one year, yeah. Yeah. I think I've been there in 2018. Oh, that's cool. I like it, yeah. Um, so I, I think it's the first time I've actually mentioned on a live stream the company that I work for, which is not a big deal because it's on my LinkedIn profile. It's not like I'm, it's not a secret or anything. Um, oh, that's yeah. quite cool. I wasn't aware of that. But you've been around, you've, you've been loads of companies across Germany, yeah, sure. right? You've, you've been, you do quite a lot. We had one of the discussions I remember that we had, which always and makes me laugh, is the, the concept of, I mean, I'm not sure, for people who've never lived in Germany or, or aware of, 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 what, of what it's like in some regards, um, the struggle, in my opinion, of the um, digitalization and the standard sometimes that you get in Germany of, of, of even from a, from a really basic level, like, like uh, mobile phone reception, which is a strange example, but you can, it's, it's it, for me, that is like quite a struggle sometimes. Like it's a, uh, people are kind of like fax, still using faxes and stuff. It's yeah, quite a strange thing. I, I, I just want to say I have to leave because I'm getting a fax now. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah, but, but you're, 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 you're really, really, uh, you're really right. This is something which I don't understand as well, because there are so many people who are like, fearful from technology mm -hmm. or something like this which is really and this is something you don't um um experience if you go to other countries right mm -hmm. so um it's very strange it's really it's really strange there was there was like um uh, a former girlfriend of mine was mm -hmm. from uh was from poland and we were mm -hmm. visiting poland and we were going to the village where she came from. And this was like a village uh, of 30 farms or something. Really 30 mm. farms, one church, nothing more, right? Mm. Really. And I was on, um, on, on one of the grounds of one of, one of the farms. There was, you, you could uh, um, see in every direction, there was like nothing, right? Mm. Mm. And I had uh, um, full um, oh, uh, bars, on my yeah. hand, full, 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 um, like all the bars, uh, basically. Yeah. All, 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 all the bars on four G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can go. go. I can go to city center Berlin. So yeah. like fans of Tom. So the city yeah. center, yeah. and yeah. I can be on. I can be on edge. No yeah. joke. Yeah, it's yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> It's um, uh, another thing. It was. It's just that the general, the mentality that you discussed was, uh, that you mentioned yeah. as well. My daughter um, recently signed up to do something. It's um, so computer club. So to do computer club, how did she sign on? How do you think? Did she have to go to a website and enter your details? No. Oh, hold on, hold no. On. <laughs> P PDF that we had to print out, write everything by hand, and then 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 take it back in and stuff. And it's just. But this is something we had to do with pass as well for many many years because um in germany there is some kind of law i'm i'm not a lawyer at all but there's some yeah. kind of law if you have a, if you have a, like a verein i don't know what the word in english is for this but club um, or organization club, or something. Yeah, yeah something yeah but but more organized and mm. more and more german than you can imagine mm. and um <laughs> yeah well <laughs> and yeah well and 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 you have to have your records so, uh, on paper or like like mm. the yeah. um the signing on, on paper which doesn't make any sense to me yeah no it's just it's really tough yeah uh, anyway. but, that, but that's germany right? it, it is it is it, it, it's a, it was because i think coming from the uk there was always thing like germany was a big company and quite you know involved in like industries therefore it's going to be um but it was quite it was quite quite the opposite of what I obviously I'm used to it now. Another thing that's quite strange, bargeld. Yeah. Um, so pay, yeah. paying for things, it, yeah. paying for things in cash. Um, yeah. no, no baris is varis. No, so only only, only paper money. Only cash is yeah. Only paper is is, is real money. So it, paying for this going somewhere where you can pay by card is oh my god, it's amazing. Yeah, but if you can pay by card, then it is not said by which card. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot pay with any card, with every card and every and and this is this is something which 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 was really the case last year last mm. year i had a client at my company here in Lüringhausen. Mm. and what you do with clients for sure you go to dinner right of course yeah. and, and and we were uh, we were at a really really nice restaurant for dinner mm. and then I, afterwards i said well i would like to pay mm. um and i said i would like to pay with cards and say no no we don't accept cards i said well the, yeah, now we have a problem Mm. Because I don't have any uh, money on me, mm. and then and then I said, well, okay, 
blind, please stay here, drink another beer, drink another wine, no matter mm, what. Okay. I will I will just go twenty minutes to the next uh, mm. to the next ATM and I will mm. grab some cash and so I can I can and this is ridiculous. And yeah. this is something this is one of the first things I think it was when I was first in, in Seattle. Okay. First yeah. time. It was really, really impressive to mm. see, uh, and there was a little story which just it's just the opposite. So there was a there um, there is this pine place market. It's like a um, market uh, hall or something, mm. and in front of this uh, market there was a guy, and he was selling hot cider right from his bike. So nice. he had a bike, and 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 mm. he was preparing hot cider and everything. And a friend of mine went there and said, well, I would like to order one hot cider, please. Mm -hmm. And so the guy was starting and, this, and then my friend said, oh, shit, I forgot I don't have any cash mm -hmm. because I, w w I haven't been at the ATM. So, well, uh, ah, I don't have any cash. And so the guy said, well, there's no problem. As mm -hmm. a, and he said, why? Why?" And then he uh, pulled his iPhone out of his pocket with some mm -hmm. device where you can just swipe your card and say, well, there you go. Yeah. It's amazing, That's right? It. That's yeah, it. It's cool. Right. It's really cool. And and maybe uh, and maybe to some of the people who don't know Germany here uh, in our uh, call, there is even in some in some um, in some supermarkets there is a policy that if you buy with card you have to buy something which is over ten euros. Mm, if you, yeah. if you have if you buy something less than ten euros you cannot buy with card. Yeah. No, which it's... is ridiculous as well. Yeah, it's it's frustrating, but yeah. So it's one Welcome. of the things that I, I try to not, I, I try to get used to it, but I've been here since like 2006 earlier, and I just can't. I refuse, actually. I'm like, no, I'm not going to get used to that. <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah, me, 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 me neither. So it's yeah. really, and, and I really try not to carry any cash with me because I think mm. this is, it's, it's ridiculous, yeah. right? Yeah, it's and, mad. And, 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 and another thing I experienced um, when, I'm, when I'm in the States, for example, when they say, well, in Germany, everything is so organized and the mm. trains and everything on time and, and everything. I said, well, you've never been to Germany, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, swing, swing back to what we were talking about before. Um, uh, this, you know, uh, there's been very little talk about data and, well, that's not true. There's been talk about, little talk about like Power BI and stuff. So. Yeah. Um, just try and go on a little bit. It's it's all good. I've enjoyed the talking, by the way. This is actually no problem for me. But just yeah, in case people in, if people tune in and expect some Power BI chat. Generally speaking, like how how much is Power BI part of your job? Because I mean, it's not like you're like a Power BI person. You you have a very broad range, of course. Yes, of, of yes, I do. have a broad range. Um, at the moment, I would say Power BI is like twenty percent of my job. Okay, that's still. A yeah. I thought less than that, to be honest. Okay, that's that, that, that's, that's oh, pretty oh, cool. Yeah, twenty percent, I would say. Nice. Yeah, no, that's really cool. We did cool. A, for for. A, Big juice company here in Germany. We did an interesting Power BI um, project last year, and maybe, maybe we will do a Microsoft case study for this. Ah, very yeah. interesting. I can come back to you when uh, the case study is out. I was going to say, will that, will that be an open case study or uh, under uh, no, secrecy? I've, no, no, um, no. Uh, to my understanding, it will be an open case study because. Uh, Hmm. Would be uh, some good advertising. So, what's what sort of stuff do you do you find that are, are your biggest like? Um, I don't want to make it all negative, of course, but generally speaking, your your biggest like like pain points, the things that like you find are restrict you most, or you struggle with, or you have to kind of use the most workarounds for. What's the sort of thing that you encounter that with, with Power BI? I'll get to positive stuff soon, I promise. <laughs> well, um, yeah, well, some sometimes. Um, it behaves a little strange, and um, what's also very, yeah, but, but but this, but I think this is some professional point here. Uh, what you have to what you have to do is you have to get your data models really right, mm -hmm. so so that it really really works. Yeah. So yeah, that, and and and, and um, depending on your da data, this could be tough. Yeah, yeah. It's actually interesting. I've I've sent I did a couple of tweets recently about my wife and her kind of using Power BI because she recently changed jobs and she's been mm -hmm. doing a couple of trainings and kind of, she's been using Power BI for a while, but it's never been like the focus of her job. So she's kind of, so I've kind of really enjoyed watching her learning path and doing what she's doing. Um, yeah. But I saw this recently, like uh, she was creating a report and she was trying to work out why the interaction wasn't as she expected and stuff. And uh, yeah, so data modeling was was, yeah. was of course that, you know, which yeah, is yeah. why I, I really think that for me, it, I really don't like that the default setting in Power BI is to auto detect the model, the relationships, yeah. I should say. Yeah, yeah. 
I think for two reasons. First of all, if you have more than three tables, it's a pain in the ass, right? Because you got it'll, they'll be wrong. You've got to delete them all yeah, and do them yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, but sure. more importantly than that, actually, I think it doesn't promote knowledge of the model. Because yeah. if you, if you yeah, go in, yeah, yeah. yeah, if you go in and think, oh, and don't think about it, but really there should be like a process that as soon as you load the data, it takes you to that screen. Yeah, exactly. So, but but the other thing is, and this is something maybe maybe um, this is not not not, not a um, um, technical technical thing, but this is I think more um, um, thing of, of 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 the mindset or uh, or thing of the marketing is um, that Microsoft um, promotes Power BI like everyone can do Power, uh, Power BI reports, mm -hmm. right? It was it was I think mm -hmm. it was the same thing and the same mistake they did with um, with Microsoft Access. Because it says okay. everyone can do databases. Well, no, because yeah. um, what you have to do in both cases, Power BI and um, um, and uh, Access, um, mm. is that you have to know some kind of um, relational data modeling. Because mm. otherwise, you couldn't uh, you couldn't um, build good applications if you don't know that. And if you think yeah. Access is the same thing like Excel, but with, but with more tables, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but, well, mm. no, it obviously yeah. is not. And and I think this is this is a big issue that um, that it pretends that it's it's very very easy just clicky clucky and yeah, clicky, everything clicky, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 draggy droppy and yeah. everything is fine yeah but but I think the point um, most of the marketing guys miss is that the clicking and the dragging and the dropping that is mm. only um, um, the icing on the cake because yeah. what you have to do and what is the real work is to just build the data model right. Hmm. And th hmm. I think this is this is the point. And if you got the data model right, it's easy to just click and and hmm. uh, and and do some visualizations and everything. And for sure, it's also a big task to uh, to um, hmm. have good reports, uh, good functional reports, good functional Power BI um, reports. But on the other hand, um, the magic behind Power hmm. BI is the data model. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's it, it's really interesting that to look at where where you start actually because if i look at my where i started with power bi it was like literally loading in two tables or maybe one mm. table when i first actually probably one table because i was like you know probably big table all the data that kind of wrongness you know <laughs> yeah um so and it just worked you could also argue or i was yeah. going to say yeah. but i was going i was going to be wrong if you if your data source for example is a already prepared you know, data exactly. model. Yeah. In in that sense, obviously you don't have to do any data modeling. However, you still have to understand data modeling because exactly. you could you could put this here and this here and say, oh, why, for example, do I have the same net sales for every single month of the year? Be yeah. And you'll exactly. know. Yeah. So if you don't know the concept, then you're still gonna have you you still need to understand why these the, these things happen. So yeah, exactly. it's true. Exactly, yeah, and you see, and you see, if you if you see reports like this, you see, well, we're making ten billion dollars each month. Well, it's great. <laughs> yeah, exactly, we're gonna have a huge staff party, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but 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 it's true. So, and, and this is uh, this is something I think which is true for um, Access. It's true for SQL Server. It's true for um, for Power BI. Mm. All these things are only tools. And what mm. you have to do is you have to know your craft, mm. because if you don't know your craft, then a tool wouldn't be um, wouldn't be of any use. Though I would say, I, I would, to play devil's advocate, I would say to be fair, they do provide good learning resources. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. to go through the process to make you understand. Oh. But you're yeah. you're right. I think the, the market. I mean, of course, they're going to market in this like most amazing way because they're not going to say it's pretty good, but you got to like learn some stuff first. They're going to say you can do it straight away. You can, you can very quickly open connected data, load data, create a visualization. That is true. Sure. And it's very, very impressive that you can do that. Yeah. And I think that's nice because it's kind of like, it kind of draws you in. Did with me. I was like, exactly. Exactly. I, I've, and then if you're interested, if you get sparked to kind of keep going, then you learn these things. Um, yeah. But yeah, and but I think... You, Unless you're, a, it's like that thing where you kind of you don't know that you don't know. I think I mentioned the same thing last week. If you don't, you're, ne you're never going to learn. You know what I mean? But no. I think to be fair, when most people encounter a problem, they're going to go and 
Google it or kind of go on a learning portal. You'd hope anyway. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. I do think it actually, I said something before, and I'm not sure that that would be a cool idea, or maybe I'm wrong. As soon as you load the model, so as soon as you load, load the data, go mm -hmm. straight to the relationship view instead of straight to the to the, to the the report view. Yeah. That could be quite cool just yeah. because people know that it exists. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, but 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 that's but but that would be a good thing if you have a, some kind of a guided process. First mm. of all, load yeah. the data, mm. get your data model right, do mm. the visualization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, a good idea. Do you still work? You've mentioned access a couple of times. Do you still do work with access? Is, is it something that you? you no, 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 no. Okay. It's just it's just an example because okay. um, whenever you go to companies, everyone will say, "Wow, this is this Excel, uh, this access database, and access mm. is." such a big uh, pile of shit oh no it isn't but the problem is that many people yeah but it's it's a functional relational database system right mm. but the problem is that most of the people are not using it this way but they're mm. using it like some kind of uh, excel with more tables or something <laughs> yeah and yeah yeah uh, true. i i i, I... I have little experience with 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 um, with access, and they were not yeah. particularly positive, to be honest. I was, I was, I was on a project where the access database was kind of coming to the end of its life, and mm -hmm. needed needed to be moved across to like a our data warehousing, and yeah. um, so that 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 was pretty tough. No, I mentioned I asked the question because I'm, different data sources are quite. Um, interesting and amusing sometimes my wife recently had a project where all the data sources were pdfs um oh that, wow. that, was, that was pretty funny <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but, uh, but on the other hand it's amazing that you can do all this stuff with that's you. Yeah, yeah that's a very good point that's, yeah that's really really amazing yeah and you uh, can do so much automation so um whenever i'm talking to clients and i'm showing them a little power, bit power bi i i also do some some training some power bi and everything Mm -hmm. And um, when I when I show it to them, and um, sometimes or, or not sometimes, but but very very often, I get um, some reaction of, well, is it doing all this data transformation stuff um, on its own? Yeah, and for new data as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, now you saved me two days um, a month of yeah. data preparation. Brilliant, yeah. because no one no one likes to do data preparation. That's actually a good point. When you talk about the marketing for the tool, yeah, I keep I keep going back to things that you said before. You talk about the marketing of the tool. It's very you know you can create the reports. There's actually I could be wrong. Not a great deal of marketing geared towards we can automate horrible processes. You know, it's very much on the on on the front end, the Power BI yeah. side, of, if you will, not the Power Query. You can connect yeah. and you know reduce manual manual labor, manual work. These processes that everyone, I mean, if you look at like, um, I used to work not with, but with people who worked with um, this, this tool, what was it called? Like UiPath? Yeah. And it was like, you know, like RPA processes. Mm -hmm. And RPA, we, obviously when we were selling it, it was always about, you know, we can take these manual processes mm -hmm. that, that you hate, that yeah. you have to do daily, whatever, and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have to, and that, that is a huge part of the, the, the BI thing, you know? Yeah, but on the other hand, when when you do marketing, um, Power Query doesn't look as sexy as Power BI. So this is the point. That is true. Not is not true. so many shiny colors. But that's the thing. It's about what's on the inside, right? And Power Query is kind of on the inside of Power BI. Beauty exactly. is on the inside, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> maybe if they just changed how. Maybe if they made it less gray, you know, if they kind <laughs> of brightened it up a little bit, they could they could make it look more beautiful. You know, I don't know. Some flashy colors, maybe. It's all about the flashy colors, right? This is, yeah. this is, this is, everyone knows that. This is why we all put big fl we, flashy pie charts and stuff and heat maps. We need a Power Query theme editor. There you go. Yeah. So you can, you can put your favorite image in, uh, in the back of Power Query. And <laughs> you, can, you can put your company's theme in, in Power Query too, Perfect. right? Perfect. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this, man. And, yeah. and you can have some advertising as well. So this data transformation was presented by. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Oh, I love it. Oh, that would be good fun. But yeah, yeah. it's um, yeah. it's it's one of those things that I think it gets gets overlooked regarding the the, the back. 
I always say the back end process. It's not really back end, yeah. I understand that, but it's a back end uh, of Power BI, you know? Yeah, it's back end of Power BI, right. Yeah. So, but yeah. we didn't talk about the third, um, the, um, the third session I had on, uh, on the past summit. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I totally interrupted you. No, I do no, apologize. No, 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 no. no, no. But we were, Please but go, we were, go for we were, it. But we were talking about whiskey tasting and we were talking about <laughs> yeah. not having that back. We were talking about Microsoft Access, right? So yes. Everything everything's good. So, well, what was really, really interesting was um, on Mon uh, we arrived on Thursday and mm -hmm. on the other Monday, I got a private tweet. Okay. On Twitter. And this mm -hmm. private tweet was from Adam Sexton. And Adam asked me if uh, we can jump in for the Power BI hour or um, uh, for because someone has dropped out. Uh, okay. And what Adam has, has um, seen was, um, I think it was in 2018. I'm not 100% sure. But okay. I think it was in 2018 on the um, SQL conference, the biggest German speaking conference for um, data, Microsoft data related topics. Um, on the SQL um, conference, we, um, uh, um, Ben Kettner and I, we did. Um, uh, heavy metal uh, thing with uh, power with power bi and what we did was um we had a song and we we we, we were building a streaming service <laughs> so, huh? okay, and cool. and the streaming service wa was streaming only one song the song it we were streaming was um fear of the dark from iron maiden <laughs> and what what we did is we we built a website the web website was doing a frequency analysis of the song and was mm -hmm. putting this frequency analysis as uh, as um, a data uh, a streaming data set to Power BI, and cool. then we and, and then we built um, um, you know these uh, graphic equalizers where all the mm -hmm. um, all the bars are jumping up and down, and we built this with Power BI. That's rad. Yeah, I've never seen and, anything like that before. And and this this was was really fun. And um, Adam um, in 2018, Adam was um, in uh, in Darmstadt and he saw this, mm -hmm. and he remembered and he asked if he could do this and. Ben and I were um, were from the spot. We were on uh, we were on this idea, and I said, "Yeah, for sure, we will do this. We will we will um, hit the stage with all the big names. We were yeah. really great." And um, then, because we weren't prepared for this, um, so one of the one of the fun things we do is um, um, because, as you see, I'm bald, and I'm uh, <laughs> so I'm 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 not the best heavy metal guy here, right? So what, what I did uh, always is um, when, when Ben, he's opening his hair, he has really long hair, and then he's doing some head banging, and he said, well, Frank, you cannot do this. And what I do always when we do this, I, I, I grab a, um, a blonde wig from my, from my backpack, and then I put it on, and then this, this is one of the first laughs of the talk. Love and it. Um, and uh, well, what, what's, um, uh, and then uh, there was a big challenge to get mm. the blonde wig in Seattle. Because I have no idea where <laughs> Americans buy wigs, but what, and 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 the first night I was uh, I was um, walking around. It was Monday Monday night to just see where mm. I get a wig, and I did manage to get one. But what was really good is I met a good friend of mine, Scott Klein, who um, mm. formerly worked at Microsoft and um, lived many many years um, in Seattle. And I asked uh, I asked Scott uh, Scott where can I get a wig here in in, in Seattle? And he said, well. You have to go to uh, one of the Halloween shops. So there is a Halloween shop, which is a all year Halloween shop. And man, it is it, 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 it was so big. It, it was really it was mighty yeah. blowing big. Really, it, it was it was uh, um, there are this this big markets in Germany. Uh, I think, you know, Metro or something like this. Yeah, yeah these like wholesale it was, it was, places. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was like like one of these places, uh, but only with Halloween stuff. So, Americans do love Halloween, so I guess that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I and, and, and I I went in there, and um, and then I, then uh, I didn't find one wig. I find a wall of wigs, so <laughs> I just had to, just had to choose. And uh, well, and and then the other thing was um, Adam was talking to us, and uh, what what we did as well in Darmstadt, um, Ben and I we were having real big beers on stage we um to because because in in darmstadt the uh, um we did it in the um keynote room and the keynote room is a really really big room for like you, you can put in 600 people or something mm -hmm. and so we 
said, well, if we if we drink beer on stage, we have to have large beers because uh, even even the guy in the last row can see it. And so we decided Oktoberfest style, right? Yeah, but we decided to drink Faxe. Which was, which was maybe not our brightest idea. Well, Jesus Christ! Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but we had big, big, we had big cans, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. These are for, for for people who don't know this. These are beer cans, and there is one liter of beer in it. And yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, well, maybe not not my favorite beer, to be honest. Well, to yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's, it's not nice. the best. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, and then and then and then Adam told me what we cannot do because it's not with the policies of of um, of past summit and everything. We are not allowed to drink beer on stage. Okay. We cannot do it. Okay. It's not good. So, what 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 we did then was we said okay, but we will do a joke. And um, I went I went to the supermarket and I get a big bottle of I think two gallons or what what's in mm -hmm. there a two gallon bottle of root beer. And then, and then, we um, then I had I had a, a bag where this bottle was in, and we were hitting the stage, and then um, we started, and then um, and then Ben said something like, "Well, we we are uh, um, to have a real metal session. Uh, we have to have some beer." And uh, <laughs> Adam in the back went pale, <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, "Well, I, I I bought something," and and then I put out the root beer, root beer. and said, "Well." See here, it, it it says beer, right? It says beer, and then then, then we put it in some some um, some uh, cups, yeah. and 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 we drink it, and say, well, the American beer is even worse than we saw. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, I like it. Yeah, but it was it was it was really fun. It was nice. it was really great fun. I have a picture. Yeah, you sent me a link before, right? I'll bring it. Uh, yeah, I'll bring it. Can you, One can second. You show the picture. I think so. so. This yeah, is you go with with a yellow wig, and. And the uh, and the guy um, on my side, this is Johan. Um, hmm. Johan is an MVP from um, Norway, and he was he was uh, and we we um, spent a lot of time in Seattle with 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 Johan, with Martha, with Ben, and and me. We were going around, and I was several times. Really, it, it was, I think, more than five times. Um, some uh, some people came to me and asked, uh, "Well, is this David Letterman?" And said, "No." <laughs> <laughs> it does not. Oh, I love it. That's true. It's very, it's very similar. Maybe, maybe, maybe when some ladies ask if this is David Letterman, I should. He says yes, yeah. yes, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not such kind of guy. So, that's amazing. That's yeah, a cool. Well, that's a cool photograph, mate. Yeah. That's a great. That's a great idea. I love the fact that you that you presented that, and then even so, you said it was back in 2018 you first did it, and then yeah. a quite a few years later, it was still remembered and presented. Okay. Uh, that's it was, cool. <clears throat> it was so uh, when we did this in Darmstadt, it was really really great because um, uh, it 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 the um, the main stage in Darmstadt it's like um, it's like a theater. It's like really mm. a, a big uh, big theater or something, and um, they all uh, also have the um, sound equipment in there. Mm. And um, the guys who who did the sound um, and and we talked to them and we uh, uh, we told them what we will uh, what we will do. And mm. I think there were some metalheads there and, as well, so they cranked up the volume, and it was. It was and and the fun thing is, um, on the stage we didn't we didn't get how loud it was, because uh, okay, we did, yeah. because because all the speakers are um, off stage, so mm. Um, mm. so on the stage um, yourself you don't get the the real volume. Yeah. Yeah. And they they really cranked up, and it was it was really amazingly loud. So you basically had like the presentation version of um, Wacken. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, the, well, uh, if, if there yeah. is a power BI uh, track on Wacken, just come yeah. in. Yeah, definitely. I will do it. Yeah, Wacken being a musical festival in Germany, by the way. People didn't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I can I can reveal the thing here. Do it. Do I it. don't I don't know if this is going to be public, but maybe Ben will kill me. But so um, maybe this is my last talk. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, Ben and I we are planning a metal team data conference in Berlin. This this uh this year that's awesome i think in september that's very cool yeah okay um, um i want i want to go <laughs> yeah. i want to be there yeah you're you're in berlin right yeah of course yeah definitely yeah, yeah. oh that's that, that that's oh, a nice reveal ben, ben please don't kill me 
Yeah, it will. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure he said it's okay. If he said it's not okay, I'll just mute out the last like thirty seconds or a minute, and then yeah. It's okay. I think I think it's okay. Oh, awesome! That's really cool. I look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, Mate, I think I have to call it a day there. It's been well over the um, the 45 minutes. It always is. Oh, well. uh, but yeah. I, I have another call in like 50 minutes. Um, okay, so I've got to prepare for that. And uh, gotta... Otherwise, I could talk to all night. It's no problem. Uh, me too, to be honest, mate. Um, yeah. so, um, but I think we'll... We'll say we'll say goodbyes. I'll say thanks to everyone for uh, and yeah. to, to joining, so for the getting involved in the chat and asking the questions and whatnot. And um, I'll be back next Thursday. But Frank, Me not. it's be no, you won't be. But it's been an absolute pleasure, and we'll speak yeah, soon. Was, of course, it was really yeah. pleasure to be here, and yeah, yeah, thanks for, sure. for the invitation. I had uh, uh, lots of fun. Yeah. yeah thanks for cool. having me, and uh, bye. Yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Bye bye. bye.